Hi, this is Raven Dana. It is Thursday, March 16th. Thank you for joining me at Walking Between the Worlds. Uh, we're going to uh, chat a little bit today about the way the mind works and a little bit of that place where science and magic come together. Uh, I'm going to remind you also that next week, a week from uh, this coming Wednesday, uh, the class will begin. That is the Dream Circle class. So if you're interested in that and you want more information, please visit the web my website, ravendana.com. Um, meanwhile, what I want you to know is we're going to talk a little bit of today about how things move from the deep mind, from this deep unconscious into experience, into reality. What that has to do with magic and that line where uh, the known and the unknown come together. And then for the next few days, I'm going to post some journeys, some meditations that are all about clearing out and cleaning out. You know, we have equinox coming and so we have the spring cleaning thought behind all of that. And what I want to do is give you a series of meditations that will allow you to clear out some of the thoughts, habits, patterns, to do some change, some deep level change if you want to pursue it, on the level of clearing out some things from your past. So if that's something you're interested in, those meditations are going to be coming up and I'm going to do one a day. This is Thursday, so Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. There will be five of them. Um, all right, having said that, let's talk a little bit about how uh, the magic of the mind actually calls things into being. In ordinary conversation about how habits and patterns form in the mind, what we know is, uh, you've probably heard this phrase, what fires together, wires together. So when things happen at the same time, then they become affiliated or associated in the mind, in the brain. And the simplest examples of that I can give you are the way that a certain smell might bring back a powerful memory or looking at something might trigger a memory. So whatever's in your environment when something's occurring becomes wired to that memory, literally uh, becomes part of the memory. Now, that's, kind of, that's one of the simple ways to take a look at that. What I want you to know, though, is that the way that patterns are built and also the way that patterns are revised has to do with two things, repetition and emotional intensity. So if someone says the same thing to you over and over and over and over and over again enough times, don't touch that, it's hot, don't touch that, it's hot, don't touch that, it's hot. Or they say it with a lot of emotional intensity, don't go near that fire, right? Um, both the repetition and the emotional intensity help that thing to wire into your brain, like you're going to remember it, right? So you'll either hear it enough times or you'll hear it enough with emo enough emotional intensity or some combination of the two that lets it log in, that wires it into your, into your thinking processes and then drops below your thinking into your unconscious processing. So in other words, you don't actually have to consider whether or not the fire is hot you just don't put your hand in fire, right? It's no, it's not a thinking process. Like when you were a kid, maybe you had to get close enough to feel the, ooh, ah, and, and then back off. You actually just have it wired in. So the good news is that these are how patterns and habits form that serve us easily in daily life. This is how things like uh, driving get wired in. We do it enough, we have a lot of repetition, and we have a fair amount of emotional intensity as we're learning to drive, and we're first starting out a little scared and a little maybe nauseous, a little oof, uh, anxious, and then as we progress, we start to feel joyful, happy, accomplished, right? So the emotion, it doesn't matter what the emotion is. It matters that there's two factors, emotion and repetition that create the pattern. So that frees us now when we're driving, at least most of us most of the time, to, to drive mostly on autopilot, where we're still seeing what's happening on the road, but we're not overly focused. We can have a conversation with somebody. We can listen to the radio. We can glance up and see the clouds and we're not gonna wreck the car and we're not gonna get super anxious because most of the mechanics of driving have now been wired in. Okay, I'm taking a long time to set this up for this reason. 
what we put our daily thoughts on becomes a filter in the brain that allows us to see or not see the things associated with that filter. So if we have a very strong opinion, a belief, a, a repetitive pattern that tells us, for example, things like, if I had any luck at all, it would be no luck, right? Or I never win the lottery. Or, you know, I never win the prize at a party. If we have a strong, a very strong set of beliefs and repetitious thoughts, what that does is it sets up a pattern that has the brain scan the environment for what makes that so, okay? Which means things like, if there's a $20 bill on the ground, you're gonna step over it and actually not see it. Which means if you get wired, if you get a lot of wiring for um, being made wrong, if you're made wrong a lot as a kid and growing up, or by a person that you respect and admire, the chances are pretty high you're gonna have self-talk uh, that makes you wrong a lot. It's just gonna kind of run in the background. All right, so why this is important to know is that we often have this imagining that just quote unquote being positive, right, is somehow gonna fix whatever ails us. Putting our attention on the thing that we want is somehow gonna draw it to us. Now that's only true if we're actually putting our attention on that thing as if we already have it. That's very important. So, light brain wiring, magic, is about shifting the energies around us to accommodate what we desire or what we're calling into form. So, if you're sending out messages that are, that are revolving, that are rotating around the idea of lack, I want this. We're not thinking about the thing and how it feels to have it. We're not thinking about the experience and the joy of the experience. We're thinking about calling this to us into this space of lack so that then we can feel this way. Then, and, and I'm going to tell you that doesn't work. It will not work. So there is this meeting point between science and magic. There's this crossover place where in order for you to use what we know wires the brain and actually sets up real time filters that allow us to navigate reality toward what we want and away from what we don't want, we have to take into consideration that when we are, for lack of a better way to put it, every thought you have, every series of thoughts you have is a spell. Your words are spells. Your words resonate with energy and power and images. So the language of the deep space of mind and time is image and emotional expression, emotional energy. So when we have images that are about the lack of what we, of what we have, when we're looking for that to be filled, we can't call it into being because what we're telling our deep self to do is to create, by repetition, is to keep creating the sense and feeling of lack. So that's why it doesn't, positive thinking, that doesn't work. You have to actually have the emotion and the repetition that then shifts the pattern of energy. So it acquires, you, be, you become more an, of an attractor for those thoughts, experiences, energies, and opportunities that deliver the thing that you want. So if you want to have a lot of money, you don't keep staring at your bank account with 200 bucks in it. You actually sit down and imagine vividly, not just having the money, but what does it mean for you? What would it do for you? What does it represent to you? Because nobody needs a pile of cash for its own sake. It's what we would do with it. It's the joy it would bring us or um, the gym membership we would buy or the kind of uh, dinner party we might throw for a friend or, right? So what you wanna do if you're creating something with your thoughts and beliefs, if you're actually casting energy out, which we do all day, every day with every thought we have, 
If you have repeated experiences that aren't working, check the reality of your repetitive thoughts. And the advice here is to take an area, take a specific thing that you want to shift, manifest, change, transform, whatever, however you want to say it, and practice this one thing, repetition and emotional intensity from the point of view of the end result. If you want to um, be thinner, you don't think about, you don't stare in the mirror and bemoan the shape of your body. What you do is you vividly imagine what it feels like, what your body feels like at this energetic weight, at this different level of experience. You, you vividly imagine yourself in the kind of clothes that you would wear, right? If you're gonna, if you, if you have it on your radar to buy a car, you don't think about the clunker that you have. You imagine vividly the feeling of driving the new car. What does it look like? What's your experience when you go into the dealership? How easy it is to find the make and model and the color that you want. You keep repeating, again, vivid images and emotions. The repetition creates the energy that then retrieves the situations, the circumstances, and the opportunities from all the possibilities that are out there and brings them a little closer and a little closer and a little closer until you shift and that thing occurs or that experience happens or whatever that is you're trying to do. So there's a technology here. You know, when we, when we practice magic, right? Practical magic has to do with reaching out into the greater world around us, into the universe, into the deep layers of creation with our thoughts and our emotions and calling that to us, to us which we wish to shift or bend or change, right? So again, um, I'm not necessarily saying that you need to whip out a spell book, right? They're great. Spells are great. They've worked for people for thousands of years. And yet, those spells are actually a way of focusing our, our thoughts, our time, our energy using repetition and emotional intensity because it is your intent, your intention that creates the shift in energy. When we think about, when I think about driving down the road and it's um, a busy day and there's a lot of traffic and I think I want to put a bubble around my car, protect my car, right? I'm feeling a little off and I say the word protect I've done it so many times with such intensity that I can, I vividly feel that bubble of protection instantly surrounding my car and giving me a buffer between my car and those around me. And I have had the experience of being in that state of mind, bubbling my car, and watching somebody about to come into my lane and then veer off and change their mind. Not that that necessarily wouldn't have happened anyway, but it doesn't mean it wouldn't. It, I mean, for all I know, that person could have come right into my lane and smacked into me because I would have nowhere to go. But maybe at that moment, there was a thought, there was a feeling, there was something that made that car go the other way. All I'm saying is, that the more vividly you imagine the end result, the more powerful the end result will be. And it's not just that you imagine it and forget that it exists, right? It's like, think about the energy that we put into things when we worry. Oh my goodness, right? When we worry, especially if it's about something that we then later say to ourselves, what was going on? That was a little crazy. That was kind of inane. And yet at that moment, we are committed to that worry. We're imagining it. We're feeling what it would be like. We're calling up these terrible, scary pictures of what could happen or what's going to happen. So that is the practice to use that level of intensity that we experience when we worry, right? to actually apply to calling in and creating things that we choose to have, that we want to change or shift in our lives and in the world around us. And, it, you, and you can use that to create bridges, 
communication bridges between yourself and the people around you. So it's the same thing that instead of imagining your conversation with them, like going down the tubes the way it always does or ending up in a fight the way it always does, what if you sat quietly and imagined vividly having a conversation that went differently, having a conversation and don't change them. Not a conversation in which they were easygoing and they listened and they agreed with you. Not that. To create a level of conversation in which the old pattern is not repeating, but a new pattern is being established. You're feeling different in the conversation. You're speaking a little bit differently. The tone of your voice is different. They're responding a little bit differently. So again, to shift, to shift the reality in a way that you're using repetition and vivid imagery and emotional intensity to call that result forth. So that's the thought I want to leave you with today. It's, this is a short session, but I want you to take this and chew on it. Think about what the, here's the, here's the question. What am I putting up with? What am I putting up with? What thoughts am I, repetitive thoughts that bug me, am I putting up with? What self-recrimination am I putting up with? What in my environment could I do differently that would give me a little more room, peace, breathing space, enjoyment? What am I tolerating? What am I putting up with? Take a look at some of those things. Might even be a job, might even be some people. What am I putting up with? And if you used this method this way of utilizing emotional intensity, vivid imagery, and repetition to call up something new, I think that you will be pleasantly surprised at how things around you start to shift. And again, this isn't like sitting in your living room imagining that flowers magically get planted and grow in your garden. This is about imagining that garden and then you get off your keister and you go out to the garden and you do what needs to be done. So it's both and, right? I mean, you're not going to have the magic broom clean your kitchen, but you might find that you get an extra hour time that you didn't know that you didn't expect to have and you feel motivated to clean it. And you do, and you're pleased with yourself and you're happy. So again, from from very small things like that to very large things that require a lot of time and energy, like, um, for example, if you have an illness and you're looking for a better result or you're looking for some healing. So the process is the same. And it just is about how much repetition, imagery, emotional intensity you put out there. All right. Equinox is coming, spring is coming, um, and in the other part of the world, fall is coming. So I hope you have a wonderful day. I will uh, be p posting meditations that um, take this idea and put it in a practical, usable, meditative journeying form to clear out, clean out some of the debris from our own individual past because spring cleaning starts with the inside, right? Inside out. Have a great day, and thank you for tuning in, and I will see you again soon.